Hello. During the next several minutes, I'd like to share with you the excitement of meetings that I've experienced over the past 15 years with trainers and educators like yourselves across North and South America and Europe and Australasia, which have led to the development of materials which I'll soon present for you. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Elias Porter, a psychologist. Some of you may know about me through my early connections with Carl Rogers at Ohio State University and then later at the University of Chicago. Others of you may know me through my connections with the RAND Corporation, the System Development Corporation. And before that, I helped establish the Merit System Council for the Oregon State Public Welfare Commission and during World War II served as a classification officer with the U.S. Navy. Now, in these clinical, industrial, business, military, and governmental settings, one thing really stands out. The more aware we are of what makes us tick, the more aware we are of what makes others tick, the more aware we are of the impact we make on each other's feelings, the more empowered we become to control the outcomes of our relationships with others. And that's what relationship awareness is about, empowering people to control the outcomes of their relationships with others. It's the key to greater personal effectiveness. In broad outline, relationship awareness is quite simple. As Harvard's Cluckhorn and Murray once said, each person is like every other person, each person is like some other persons, and each person is like no other persons. In relationship awareness theory, we say, each person is like every other person in that each person wants to feel worthwhile as a human being. And each person has within certain powers for achieving a sense of personal self-worth. We go on to say that each person is like some other persons in the powers they choose as their way of achieving feelings of self-worth. What are these powers we all have but choose to use differently? First is the power of helping people grow, to be more today than they were yesterday. We all feel good about helping others under some circumstances. For some, these circumstances are few and far between, while for others, these circumstances are almost always present. A second power is the power of directing people productively. The power of being the leader that others want to follow. Now, we all want to run the show under some circumstances, and for some, these circumstances are few and far between, but for others, these circumstances are almost always present. A third power is that of shaping order out of chaos, of thinking before acting, of being self-dependent and self-reliant. Now, we all want to do things in our own particular way under some circumstances. For some, these circumstances are few and far between, and for others, these circumstances are almost always present. And finally, the power of putting the team before self, pulling together as one, hanging loose, being flexible. Now, we all want to put the interests of the group first under certain circumstances. For some, these circumstances are few and far between, but for some, these circumstances are almost always present. And when we talk about empowering people, we might better say that we help them gain insight into and control over the powers they already have. We all know that insight comes best not from lectures, but from controlled experiences. A sequence of controlled experiences that we have found most effective in helping people discover their own powers. Now these controlled experiences include a series of 10 exercises uh, and for you people who are trainers, we have a facilitator's guide.